Welcome, welcome to episode one of You Ever Heard Of. I'm Rob. I'm Nick. And uh, yeah, we're just two dudes uh, who love music and love to show each other new bands all the time. So why the fuck not make this podcast uh, where we can just show new bands and albums to each other and pretty much review them together. Uh, We'd like to open up each episode talking about any upcoming events, shows, new releases that came out recently, stuff like that. Um, I mean, we'd like to direct it towards our local scene, obviously, in Rochester. So any bands or anybody who's doing anything, if you're doing anything creative, um, send us a message. We'd like to shout you out in the beginning of the episode, um, kind of promote your upcoming events. Keep in mind, we do record a few days prior to the release date. So, uh, But I mean, diving right in, talking about new releases, the Great American Ghost Record that dropped Friday. Oh man, that's a banger! Oh, it's a banger. What, what have you been saying lately? That, that fun, that oh, one. It's bops. a bop. It's a bop. <laughs> that shit bops. <laughs> like what? Where did you say you read that? It was about the Green Day record. No, that was honks. <laughs> <laughs> it honks. Like who the fuck says it honks? Like I remember, uh, like Jared Johnson does. Shout Jared, out Jared Johnson. Jared, <laughs> who, why would you say that it honks? I found out later that honks is bad. Oh, the okay. The record All is right. bad. It okay. honks like a goose. Dude, that, I, see, now that's fitting because, like, you were using it that day when you told me about it as a good thing. Yeah, and that's I, was I like, don't know what I'm talking about. Okay, <laughs> that makes sense. Because I was like, dude, the Green Day record sucks. It's absolute trash. It's, uh, yeah, it's, it's it a, honks. It's, it honks, yeah. <laughs> but the Great American Ghost record, though. It does, does not honk. Dude. It's a fucking solid piece of work. Yeah, that fucking I I've been listening to the tracks that they've been coming out like mm-hmm. there was one or two tracks here and there and I was like this fucking record's gonna rip. Yep. Yep. Um, Alter of Snakes was on on repeat for like a week straight. <laughs> yeah. Last week specifically. <laughs> Dude, do you have any favorite tracks so far? I know the record's only been out, like, less than a week now at this point. Uh, Warborn got me raging early. Fuck, dude. You mentioned the that. The breakdown at the end is a fucking Dude, sabbat. I listened to it on the way home. I was like, what song? Because, like, I want to drop a song to somebody to listen, for everyone to listen to um, in this intro. And I was like, what song should I play? And, like, you mentioned that. And I listened on the way home. And I was like, this fucking song <laughs> right? rips yeah. hard, dude. Yeah. Fucking rips. That one and, um, what's... What's the first single they put out? Prison of what? Uh, Prison of Hate. Prison of Hate. That's what I thought. Yeah, Prison of Hate. Um, there's a couple little tasty licks in that one um, that have getting that have gotten me pretty pumped up. Uh, honestly, though, the whole record is just so it's fucking angry. It's Dude, it's off. so it's fucking. Their solid. heaviest release to date for sure. Dude, yeah, I'm the intro Rat King though, like right off the bat. Like, that's the one I'm going to be playing for everyone to listen to. I'm just going to play it the first fucking two minutes. And, the, like, dude, like, listen to this fucking intro. Just listen to this fucking intro. Yeah, they really come out swinging with this. Fuck 
fucking yeah that intro it just fucking it really grabbed me into the whole record and i was like i'm ready to fucking just jam yep. and i was pissed off at my desk and i was like came into work <laughs> happy as fuck yeah. like i was like oh this is a great day and then i like listened to this song and i was like I'm going to fucking kill somebody. <laughs> I'm going to start swinging in 0.5 seconds. I'm, I'm sad that this episode is airing when it is, only because um, if you're listening to this episode, the day it came out, you probably either missed out or went and saw Great American Ghost play at the montage. Um, they were here with Born Anew, Body Snatcher. Um, they played with Soma Slumber, Into the Harbor. It was probably a fucking banger. And if you're listening to this now and didn't go, cry about it. Go go and listen to that record. Because um, you're going to be like, fuck, I should have went. If you did go, fucking tweet us and tell us how fucking awesome it was. What was your favorite part of the show? Um, also, but, the new Body Snatcher record is pretty solid, too, if you're into that band. I'm guilty, because I didn't fucking listen to it. So hey, I, I feel like I feel like I'm not a huge Body Snatcher fan. Like enough, I've never like listened to them to like want to be like, oh, they have a new record coming out. Let me check it. I I don't know. And then Born Anew, I got into them because Tyler, their drummer, is a, is a good buddy of mine. He booked UWAG a couple times in New Jersey, and he's always treated as well, so, like, obviously I'm going to try and support his band. So, um, shout out Born Anew, Tyler. Um, but, yeah, that uh, that tour package is stacked. You're right. Yeah, absolutely. It's yeah. going to be a, a banger of a show, and uh, I'm, I'm sure it'll be a good one. I remember I saw Great American Ghost. Um, Actually, when they were on tour with you guys in Bungler, I came out to Buffalo. Oh, the Buffalo Tra- show? Yeah, it was when Travis was filling in. Ah, yeah, yeah. Uh, I Travis felt bad because Travis didn't get to play that show. <laughs> that was probably the most dick move UWAG has ever done, to be honest. Sorry, Travis. Too. Yeah, so, dude. I looking UWAG. <laughs> at the end of that tour, I thought about it because even Ethan like called us because Ethan, the vocalist, he just he doesn't he'll, he'll call you on your shit. That's just that's who he is as a person. Right. Yeah. And he called us on our shit that day because. Kevin couldn't go on that tour because Kevin had other shit going on. Right. And Kevin was available, was home the day of the Buffalo show. Mm-hmm. So Travis s- fills in for this tour, does the whole tour with us. He's a fucking gem. He's so <laughs> sweet. He's quiet. He gets along gets along with everybody in all the bands. Our fucking van shits the bed in fucking Georgia. We're like, fuck. <laughs> We're screwed. What does Travis do who's not in the band? Offers up his credit card and helps us rent a van, a minivan, so we can hit all the Florida dates that most of the Florida dates were kind of bunk. So it's like, he did all of this, such a sweetie pie, (laughs) we come all the way back to Buffalo, and like, somebody who should have played every show, Kevin was like, dude, do you mind if I like play this show with my band? Like, I would love to play this show, like it's going to be a sick one because it was Bungler's record release show. Yeah. I mean, it was just going to be a cool show. And Travis isn't the kind of person that's like, no, like, I'm filling in, I'm going to play. Right. He's so, not going to tell the dude who he's filling in for that he can't play with his own fucking Exactly. Band. So, like, it was a fucking, like, weird, uncomfortable scenario. And Travis, I'm sorry. I really do apologize. That was, at the end of it, 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 wasn't, it wasn't a good thing to do. And I'm sorry. Shout out Travis Sweetie Pie Hanley. <laughs> Yo, if you don't know who Travis Hanley is, he uh, plays. He still plays bass, correct? He's not playing guitar, right? Yeah, no, he plays yeah. bass. He, he's so yeah, he's playing bass in an awesome, cool band called Kodiak. Um, fucking listen to them. Obviously, if you're in the Rochester area, you know who they are. If you're not in the Rochester area, listen to Kodiak. They're, I would compare them to somebody, but I, honestly, I think they're their own sound. And especially yeah. this newest, the newest release they put out, fucking the best thing that I didn't really love the EP that they had. Yeah. prior and the newest thing has just been fucking it's so cool i think with the addition of travis on bass and ryan till on drums yeah. I, I i think that was exactly what they needed yeah i love those boys to death exactly shout out kodiak shout out kodiak we're, we're doing the hell week thing we're, we're just <laughs> it's just shout out week. dude we're just shouting out <laughs> just shout, shout out, out hell week dude shout yeah, out shout out hell week. <laughs> hell week hell weekly um both um so uh yeah we're just gonna keep shouting things out i guess yep, sorry that's, 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 that's not trademark you can't fucking trademark that casey colton jordan you can't you can't can't trademark the shout out you, you might be able to maybe they haven't yet whatever moving forward <laughs> <laughs> 
So I was thinking at work today, Rob, and I had a question for you. Please. Yeah, this is making me nervous. You, <laughs> like you mentioned this earlier, and it's just been like on my mind all day. Like, what is this joke question thing? It's not really a joke question. A center of discussion. A... So we've both done a little bit of touring. Yeah. Yeah. You know, you listen to a lot of music in the van, right? Yeah, yeah, it's, yeah. Most of your drives consist of listening to music. Yeah, usually. This and podcasts. Yeah. So, in the UWAG van, yeah. did you guys have, like, that one song or that one artist where someone puts it on you're like, dude, what the fuck, get this shit off? <laughs> like, what was that band or record or show for you guys? <sighs> it's honestly, things. certain things got worn out. Like, Jordan, honestly, in my opinion, I feel like Jordan's, like, broad sense of, or, like, selection of music is very minimal. Okay. So, if Jordan picked the music, like, that's that's when things were, like, oh. Start to drag a little bit. Like, it was a constant rotation of Redeemer, um, Mac Miller, and, like, Kendrick Lamar. Like, okay. if Jordan's driving, it's one of those three, hands down. Or, or Citizen, probably. Um, all yeah. good, but I could see how they could probably get yeah, like, after a Yeah, like, honestly, the only one that I got sick of through all of touring, and I think Kyle can vouch for this with me, was Kendrick Lamar. Okay. Um, His well, voice is a little... I think it was ha, ha, To Pimp a Butterfly or something like that, that record. best record. <laughs> yeah, like, when that record dropped, everyone was, like, hype. Everyone was fucking talking about it. Rightfully so. And I will not take away that it was a good <laughs> record. But for me to be like, oh, it's fucking 8 o'clock, I just slept in a Walmart parking lot. Like, <laughs> me, I was the one out of the band that would literally sleep in the parking lot. Like, I let everyone else get a bench, I'd lay on the concrete ground and sleep outside. Because, <laughs> like, I'm a fucking psycho. But I would crawl in the van, we'd go drive eight hours, and next thing you know, it's fucking Kendrick Lamar, Kendrick Lamar just blaring out for the fucking tenth time. And I'm like, God Damn it! I'm I could see how that could get old because he's got like that raspy voice going on, and like after a couple hours of that, it probably does get old. I would imagine. Yeah, I mean that was honestly the only one. Uh, I, I most of the other stuff because it just didn't stay on repeat repetitively enough. All right. Um, where I would just be like, yo, I'm sick of this. Like Jim loved Etid, so Etid played a lot. And you can't really know, go wrong. Exactly. With Best band in the world. So, I mean, if anything, um, a band that I actually do like, the only band that I think got played. A good decent amount that I was like, I don't want to listen to this anymore. Is Dead and Divine? Um, I don't even. Yeah, Jordan was a Dead and Divine fan, and I like Dead and Divine, but he would play them more often than not, and I'd be like, Oh, I really don't want to listen to this anymore. Gotcha. Okay. But what about you? I'm assuming so, you brought this up because there is something. <laughs> what was it? A, a U egg song? No, it wasn't. <laughs> good. Thank God. <laughs> no, we so actually we devastated. spoke very highly of both of your records. Oh, I love that. Um. No, ours was ours was kind of a joke. Oh boy! Everyone knew it was a joke, and uh, it was it was one song in particular. It was the Acacia Strain, Tactical Nuke. So wait, did you guys play that over and over again? Yeah, we would play it. I don't know, two or three times in a row. And if you've never heard that song, give it a listen, and you'll understand why it might get a little annoying. Okay, so now you make a fucking great point. I have to look this <laughs> up real quick. Um. Give me two seconds, but I'm pretty sure I have something that is very similar that was like a huge thing in the U Egg band. <laughs> um, so what exactly about the Case You Strain song is like why you guys like played that? So if you've never listened to Tactical Nuke by the Acacia Strain, um, long story short, it's a breakdown that gets consecutively slower as the six minute song goes on. Oh, and I it, do remember this yeah, song. it's the closer on, I want to say, Wormwood. Okay. And, uh, yeah, it would just... That and you just let the, it go? Yeah, just let it go. Oh, no. And that's how we would, you know, get through a couple hours. <laughs> See, it would depend on who's driving, though, because there, there was stuff that... You know, we all had, like, pretty similar music taste, but we, we all like a little bit of the mm -hmm. different stuff. See, you egg did have a song. Okay. And... It wasn't like anybody got sick of it, though. It was like, it was our joke yeah. for some reason. And I've already, the reason I, I, had, to, I had to confirm the song title 
is I looked it up because I added it to my wedding reception playlist. Like, it has to be there. So, like, so all the UA guys that, yo, you guys better RSVP and come to my wedding. Um, uh, we'll totally hear the song. Um, and that was uh, Wallflowers, uh, One Headlight. I don't know if you know that song. No, I'm not familiar. I guarantee you if you hear the song, you would know the song. I'm sure. But, <laughs> dude, that song, like, we played that song over and over. And the first time it happened, we didn't even realize it was on repeat. Mm -hmm. And then, like, it's like the fourth time of hearing it, and we're like, is this the same song? <laughs> and then we just let it keep going, and we just were like, we were like, when do we stop this? And we didn't stop it for, like, at least an hour or two. It was just... No, maybe I'm exaggerating. It didn't take that long, but like, yeah, we listened to that song over and over again. The best part is just like when the grumbles start to like make their way towards the back of the van. Everyone's like, what the fuck? Is this over yet? <laughs> Can we go to the next song? <laughs> oh man, that's, that, was, that's a good, that was a good question. That, that wasn't as scary as I thought. Honestly, I, I really thought that that shit was going to be a terrifying question. But I think I read something the other day. I don't know if it was on Twitter or whatever. Um, but someone else was talking about that, or just like stuff that like songs or artists that have been ruined. Oh, it's on YouTube. Uh, like this band that I follow, Heart Attack Man. Shout out Heart Attack Man. <laughs> uh, they did. I watched a video that they did, and they just like talk about like bands and artists that are are have been ruined for them, mm. uh, just from listening to it a lot on tour and you know just on their own, like people overplaying it. Like for me in my personal life, I. And I'm gonna catch a lot of flack for this, but I cannot listen to Elton John. I, I can't. No, I, mean, I, I can't do Elton John. My mom it, played it, it a lot sense. as when I was a kid, and that's fine to each their own. I just cannot listen to Elton like John. Like any Elton John, or just like you I'm just not, don't want to listen to Elton John. I'm not gonna go out of my way to listen to Elton John. No, and I'm okay. annoyed when it's on because I've listened to these songs so many times okay. in my life. All right. Like I get it. I respect the dude. You know, okay. He's knighted. That's cool as fuck. Yeah. So like, I can't, I can't fault the guy for being good at what he does. I just don't personally care for it myself. Okay. I only listen to the highest quality gothic industrial. <laughs> okay. Okay. Good. 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 Um. Well, honestly, speaking of things that other people may love and a lot of people for some reason don't love, um, would be Billie Eilish. Now, are you a Billie Eilish fan? Yes or no? What I have heard, I do like very much. Okay. That's a good answer. So but you haven't listened to much? I haven't listened to it with a whole lot of intent. I've put it on so that I can say I've listened to it, but I haven't really actively listened to it. So Currently to adding this to future episodes for you to listen to. Oh, for sure. Uh, <laughs> so, Billie Eilish just dropped a new track um, on Friday, I believe it was, and she's doing the new like theme song for the new 007 movie. Oh, and, shit. Yeah, dude. Um, and, like, um, the last one that I liked... I mean, I liked Adele's 007 movie, or song, um, but the last one I liked was Casino Royale's song. Mm -hmm. um, fucking... Um, no, I can't remember his fucking name. Um, Chris. And now... <laughs> oh, my God, dude. Shout out Chris. <laughs> no, dude. <laughs> he's, he's unfortunately not with us anymore, I believe. Um, oh, Chris Cornell? Yes, thank you. From Soundgarden? I don't know why I couldn't think of his last name. I was blanking out, so thank you for saving my ass and not somebody that's <laughs> going to like tweet me and be like, you're a fucking idiot. Um, that still might happen. That might happen. That's fine. It's totally welcome. I'll do it. Because that song was so good. I'll be the one to that do it. That was... I mean, I, I, I can't... I'm admittedly not a huge 007 fan, even though the older I've gotten, I'm like, oh, I want to start watching more 007s. Yeah. But recently... Um, I rewatched the Casino Royale one and I was like, damn, dude, this song is so fucking good. But she just did, she just released her song for the new um, 007 movie, um, No Time to Die. Okay. And her okay. song is so good. If you haven't listened to the new Billie Eilish song for 007's No Time to Die, you should listen to it. I will add that to my dude, playlist. Dude, I literally get chills. Like, there's this part where the symphony's playing and like she's not known for getting like big you know what i mean like ripping out like like, like belting, belting, out, yeah. belting out big notes she's not known for that she's really known for like the pitches that she hits mm -hmm. like I don't, oh i don't like people who whisper when they sing and like sure there's parts of her singing where like she sounds like she's just like straight whispering like everyone hates bad guy because like yeah she's like, nah, 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 nah. you know what i mean like yeah. yeah i get it sure you don't like it but like if you listen to like when the party's over 
or um, I Love You, like, those songs are absolutely beautiful. Right. You know what I mean? And, like, her vocals are impeccable. And some of the pitches she can hit are so fucking good. Yeah. And that's what that's what thing she's really good at is hitting those really high pitches. But like in this song she lets out a belt and it's not a huge belt by any means. But like she lets out this belt and I'm just like wow. Like that was it, it literally gave me chills. It gave me chills. Do you remember the name of the song so I can add? I think it's No Time No Time to Die. That would make yeah, the most yeah. sense. Yeah, yeah. Remind me tomorrow and Good, I'll, yeah. I'll, I'll, I'll check it out. I'm definitely going to remind... I, I listen to it daily. It's like literally like... <laughs> it's one of those things that... Because it's like one song. I'll just click yeah. and I'll play through that song and I'm like... Oh, this song is like so good. Like in tears at your desk. <laughs> yeah. I'm like crying at, the, at my, my desk. Actually, the first time I ever listened to Billy Irish's record front to back was at work. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I, I came in for like a Saturday OT where it's like there's like no rules basically. Like yeah. show up, sweatpants, double headphones. Because like... The rules, obviously, you have to have one headphone open so people can actually, like, talk to you if they need to. Oh, yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> well, I need to phone. I have, like, the noise-canceling headphones, so, yeah. like, if I have both on, there's no way I'm ever going to hear anybody breathing behind me. So, right, yeah. Or sense that they're there. <laughs> um, so... <laughs> Shinobi. <laughs> <laughs> so, I remember one Saturday, I, I, I listened, I was like, you know what? I got four hours to work. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to listen to the whole record front to back. Double headphone, jack the volume up, and I was like, wow. This record is good. Like, and and it got the bad rep because of the song "Bad Guy," mm -hmm. which still won her fucking awards for being like one of the best songs yeah. of the year. And yeah, it's not the best song. Anybody who can listen to the podcast or not the podcast, but like listen to <laughs> listen to the record will tell you. Like Michelle, my fiance, is diehard Billie Eilish fan. She loves her, loves her, but she'll tell you like "Bad Guy" is probably one of the worst tracks. You know what yeah. I mean? It's it's not that great of a track, but the whole record and her artistry is is beautiful. And obviously, her relationship with her brother and the artists that artists that they are collectively is beautiful itself. So yeah, I did see something about that fairly recently. But you know, it, Billie Eilish is one of those artists that kind of has eluded me until fairly recently. So I think I might have to take a little bit of time and delve into her and her. Her art a little yeah, bit not more. too much. Not too. Not don't don't dive off <laughs> that cliff because you know I'm. Uh, I could make for a nice episode in the future. Yeah, I'm actually gonna go out of my way to limit your content. <laughs> <laughs> you slowly eliminate shit. Sorry, sorry. Um, but I mean, if you want to speed through shit, um, and c eliminate stuff such as the first twenty minutes of this podcast. If you really weren't digging it, um, for future reference, suggest to your friends like, hey, don't listen to the first twenty minutes. They just ramble on about bullshit. Um, I just learned this morning, I don't know if you know you can do this, at least on Spotify you can, you can fast forward or slow down, like, the speed of a podcast. Really? Yeah, dude. It blew my fucking mind. And, like, I was listening to, I listened to Armchair Expert with, da or by Dax Shepard, it's his own podcast, mm -hmm. and, because I've got this weird niche lately where, like, I love listening to, like, celebrities in their, like, normal self. Not in an interview, like, hey, how was your newest movie, and blah, 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 like, you know what I mean? Because I've been listening to Spit and Chicklets as well, yeah. and, like, that's a cool one where they bring on hockey players, and, like, it's just a casual, like, what me and you are doing, but, like, with A-list celebrities or hockey players, you know what I mean? Yeah. And that's, to me, that's so cool, like, hearing these, like, people who are real people, like, we see them as these fucking fictional characters, almost. Right, yeah. Like, they're still real people, and it's neat to, like, listen to their, like, lives yeah like they they go to fucking Wegmans every fucking day just because they live in mansions and they don't have to worry about what their next paycheck is gonna look like like they still do what we do on a normal basis and it's interesting to see hear their lives i don't know i like hearing their stories yeah no no, no. i'm the same way there's uh there's a specific youtube video that i go back to every once in a while when i need to get a little grounded or, or what <laughs> have you um, it, it's just it's a video of Dave Grohl and the drummer from his band whose name I can't remember right now um, but he's just talking about like changing his daughter's shitty diaper mm. and just like you think of Dave Grohl as this big huge rock star why fucking, is he doing that because he's a dad <laughs> yeah like you'd think he'd have somebody doing that right in, in my and your heads we're probably thinking to ourselves like he probably has someone for that but no he doesn't he, he does it himself Exactly. He's, he's Dave Grohl. Dude, it's, it's just cool. But anyways, long story short, I was... They mentioned in one of his episodes, Dax was, like, doing basically what we just did. Saying, like, 
well, like people an hour, they don't want to listen to this whole episode. It's going to be like three hours long. Right. And like, there are podcasts out there, like the Joe Rogan Experience, they have like three and a half hour long episodes. Yeah, I don't know about that. And like, <laughs> I think to myself, like, why do people listen to these podcasts that are so long? Like, I don't get it. And now I get it. Because if you're just like at work or you're like going for a jog or you're driving to work, if you put a podcast on and put it at like 1.3 speed or even 1.5, you can still hear them fine. Like, it doesn't sound like a clean, complete fast forward. Like, yeah, it's not like, chip like it's just like the fast, 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 You know what I mean? Right, yeah, yeah. And it's like, wow, I can still hear this. I can still understand it. I can still comprehend it. And now it's just flying by. Is that on mobile and on the desktop? or? I don't know about that. You know, that's a good point. The only thing that I've seen that's on both mobile and desktop is that, um, and I think it's only for podcasts, you can fast forward or rewind like 15 seconds mm, yeah but i have not seen where you can actually change the speed in which you listen to it hmm. so i'll have to see if that might be on mobile i know it i definitely know it's on the desktop for sure cool but that is that, that dude that blew my mind it blew my fucking mind yeah that's that's interesting that might help me get through some of these uh episodes of things that i'm trying to listen to a little <laughs> quicker so anyways all that shit being said um that was a lot of shit we talked about by the yeah. way did not think we were going to take that long. I, I, I thought it was just going to be a quick, like, let's hash out this fucking cool record. With it. But, yeah, that was cool. That was uh, exhilarating. Um, if you've made it this far into the podcast and you haven't just, like, shut it off yet, thank you. Um, this is our first episode. So we're, like, we're straight up winging it. Like, we've got our guidelines. We know what we want to talk about and what we're trying to do. But this might happen. Like, we might go on these tangents. And if you don't like it, let us know. That we might change it. We might not. <laughs> We're still figuring this shit out, so... Yeah, we're, we're the captains now. Yeah, <laughs> well, look at us. This is our ship to pilot. Yeah, but I mean, we're open to suggestions. We're open yeah, to... we are definitely <laughs> open, to, open to, to, to constructive yeah. criticism. We're in relationships, so like it, we know what we want to do, but if somebody tells us to do the opposite, we might do the opposite. So, but uh, yeah, anyways, with, that, with all that shit being said... Please leave but, a five-star rating. <laughs> <laughs> Let's fucking dive in. Let's dive into what this podcast is about before we like lose it. Um... We're both reviewing two records here. Um, I gave Nick a record, a band that he's heard of, but never really listened to their discography much. And then he gave me a record of a band that obviously I've heard of, <laughs> but I also did not really listen to the discography too much. So we dissect those records, and now we're going to fucking talk about them. So Nick, what record did I give you? So the record that you gave me to listen to is Story of the Year, Page Avenue. Oh, yeah. This record, dude. Tell me a little bit about... Why is this Why is this one of your favorite dude, records? Why do you recommend this? Mm, this fucking... Re oh, I need another sip of water. Hold on. Oh, that's some crispy-ass water. Oh, water. dude. This fucking... No, dude. This record. I remember just screaming this record to like high school girlfriends nice. <laughs> like dude it was it was my high school life and it was the first time i ever saw someone do a like guitar flip you know like swim the guitar around your whole body kind of oh, thing i'm very familiar <laughs> <laughs> have you attempted this yes have you successfully done it yes sick in my fucking backyard at my parents <laughs> house when i was like 16 dude i remember the music video came out on mtv because back in the day you used to watch music videos on mtv and that was like my morning ritual like get up in the morning have breakfast and watch MTV music videos for like an hour before I have to like get haul ass to school. And story of the year, I would always, it was like, they would always repeat music videos obviously every day. Like, you know this music video's gotta come on. Mm -hmm. And I waited every day to see that one. And I was, cause like YouTube really wasn't like a big thing yet. Shocker. That was Fall Out Boy for uh, me. Really? I, I, would, I would always wait for that song to come on. You know the one. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know, which one, Sugar? Was it sure? Yeah. Oh yeah. Okay. Good. I wasn't sure. You do know uh, the one. <laughs> our, our, our eras are different because, like, yeah. I I was just like a different. I was the record before that with Fall Out Boy for me. So okay. Yeah. yeah. You are you are a little older than I am. Yeah. yeah. Just sense. a little bit. Just a little bit. But yeah, dude. I was <laughs> until the day I die. Die. Like I would just wait for that song to come on every day, and I'd sing along. And to this day, dude. I sit in my car and just belt that. I, I could literally <laughs> sing. I find myself singing every word to that that song. Like I cry myself to sleep singing Page Avenue. Like it's just <laughs> it's a <gonna> frequent. <laughs> Not to dive into your personal life. <laughs> no, but yeah, dude, that that record was. It's just like a. It was definitely a huge record for me in high school, and that's why for episode one, I really wanted to stay with sh 
shock value almost for people. Okay. And like, cause the reason this podcast even got influenced is cause I remember I mentioned um, Sum 41's Chuck to you. Mm, yeah. And you were like, yeah, I've heard of Sum 41. I'm like, you've heard of them or you've listened to them? And you were like, yeah, I've never really listened to them. I'm like, so you've never listened to like All Killer No Filler? And you're like, no. Uh, don't they sound kind of like Blink-182? And I'm like, <laughs> no, dude! Like, <laughs> what? So, like, that to me was like, if, if we did episode one with, and I was just like, Sum 41 Chuck, I really feel like people would be like, you really never listen to Sum 41. Yeah, I'd probably catch a lot of flack. <laughs> and like, that's kind of what I want to do with this first episode. It's like, when you mentioned you hadn't listened to Story of the Year, I was like, I, there's part of me that can understand why. You know what I mean? At this point in time, especially when you really like dove into this music essentially i don't think story of the year was like as where they were when i was younger so for you it was story of the year for me it was hawthorne heights gotcha okay like, so they they were a little bit i mean obviously you're familiar with hawthorne heights everybody's yep. from our age group is probably familiar with mm-hmm. hawthorne heights ironically enough and i've been thinking about this since we since you gave me this record to dive into, I think I remember hearing about Story of the Year, but I listened to them, and and this is going to sound really fucking dumb because I just talked about Hawthorne Heights. I thought Story of the Year was too whiny. <laughs> Compared to Hawthorne Heights. Yeah, that uh, that does sound really dumb. Yeah, honestly. That's, a, that's a fucking hot take. Yeah, I'm, uh, I have to call you on that one. That one's uh, it's probably top three dumb things right there. <laughs> Now, 13 years later, that was kind of a dumb thing for me to say. Especially with how tough, fucking, tough some of these tracks sound on fucking Story of the Year's record. Like, wh- wh- what was the whiniest thing they talked about? Oh, I miss my home. Like, I miss being home with mommy. <laughs> Understandable. Yeah, versus a record where like, dude, I'm going to kill myself. <laughs> Straight up. <yep. laughs> Anyways, dude, tell me about the record. Inform me things I might not know. So, this record was released on September 16th of 2003. Um, It was produced by uh, John Feldman and recorded at two different studios, uh, one uh, being Foxy Studios in Marina Del Rey, California, and uh, Alex Studios in Waikiki, Hawaii. Now, I don't think you did this much details or digging, but like, do you know if any of those studios are still around? I had absolutely no idea. Nah, it's fine. I, I wasn't. I wasn't sure. I mean, I know we did a lot of digging to like, kind of dig up some stuff on these bands to like understand the record, but I wasn't sure if maybe you you knew that. Cool. Um, first of all, Waikiki, like, hell of a destination to record your debut record. Yeah, that's that's pretty insane. Were they <laughs> signed when they when they released this record, or was this just like let's take a risk? Uh, it was just kind of like, let's take a risk. Oh, wow. Jesus, sir. Uh, actually, a lot of it was recorded in the, I want to say the singer's bedroom, or like basement. Sick. It was in his house somewhere that a lot of this was recorded. Interesting. Um, so let me backtrack a little bit. If you don't know, if you're not familiar, Story of the Year is, um, it's a, just a rock band, uh, from St. Louis. They, they were from the same sort of era as, like, Thrice and Finch and The Used. Sick. Um, <clears throat> so something that they... <laughs> something they did that kind of got them a little bit of I, traction, I guess. Um, after they recorded their <coughs> album and had it mixed and mastered and stuff, they snuck onto the tour bus of the band Goldfinger. And they left like VHS videos of them doing like like jackass style like stunts and skits and stuff. So not even music, just not even music, yeah, just like videos like trying to get their attention. Yeah, pretty much. And (laughs) it one thing led to another, they toured together and it ended up getting them signed to Maverick Records. Never heard of that label. Me neither. But I mean, you should have because it's one of your favorite records of all time, Rob. <laughs> I've, I've never heard that record. <laughs> <laughs> I was going to say, what are the bands around this record label? I have absolutely no idea. Oh my god. This was a long time ago. <laughs> I was 11 years old. Keep talking. I'm going to see what bands are on Maverick Records. Um, so to kind of dive into more of my reaction to the record and my thoughts on the record... Um, 
considering it came out in 2003 and considering how a lot of records from that era sound listening to them now um, this record holds up uh, the production is fantastic um, it doesn't sound like it was recorded it, it doesn't sound like it was recorded in his house at all it's mixed very well it's mastered very well um, let's see yeah it truly didn't honestly it, it that record there, there's honestly one thing that for me to that record that comes out and you're saying was, was most of the record recorded there like like music as well like all the instruments too yeah I, I'm pretty sure most of the instruments were recorded in I want to say the singer's house I have it in my notes here but because honestly one thing for me that was like I don't know why but it just like sticks out for me is um the snare I don't really? know why it might even be a bad snare. Like, it might not even be that great of a snare. But, like, for me, that snare was... Sh Every time I hear that record, like, I love the way the snare sounds. I don't, I don't know why. I can't really explain it. It just it's hits this, like, tickles my fancy button on my body. Like, <laughs> Is when it, I, like, poppy or does it have... Kind of, dude. Just the, way, just the way the snare just hits in certain parts. Especially because like, there's a lot of double hits. Okay. Like, and, like, like ghost notes? Yeah. And just the way he... I did. I don't know. It fucking, <laughs> I'm getting horny just talking about it. Like I, I love. This is a family podcast. So. Sorry, sorry, sorry. <laughs> sorry. It's <laughs> real quick though. Um, so certain recording artists that were on Maverick, which is, which was looks like it was sold to Warner Brothers eventually. Oh, okay. So which it, is okay. pretty much everything. Um, Madonna like owned this, I believe. Oh, <laughs> yeah. Um, she's the founder of Maverick. Well, yeah. Um, Goldfinger was obviously on Maverick. Okay. Um, the Deftones at one point. Wow. Um, Alanis Morissette. Dang. Lenny Kravitz. <laughs> Marilyn Manson. Muse. Mast. Uh, Michelle Branch. Um, isn't she the, like, awesome. making my way downtown? Isn't, isn't that Michelle Branch? I want to say that. Oh, fuck. <laughs> <laughs> My fiance just looked at me and was like, no. <laughs> well, I guess I'm wrong about that. So Yeah, I don't remember Michelle. I, I remember Michelle. <laughs> she was a sweetheart. I remember that. She wasn't She wasn't bad. Your fiance? Yeah, yeah her too. <laughs> no, she's not bad. But, uh, oh, and Jack's Mannequin. Um, that was another another artist. Max Janikin? Yeah, Max Janikin. <laughs> Max, Max of whom is it? Anyways, yeah. Cool. So, um... When I first listened to this record, I kind of got like almost Silverstein sort of. I get, I, get, I get, I get to feel it. Silverstein, I feel like was a little bit later, maybe at least the record that I got into. Um, but that that's kind of the vibe that I got from that. It was like that heavy, but still melodic with some clean singing and a little bit of screaming in there. It was a, it was actually a really nice balance uh, between the the dirty vocals and the, and the clean singing. It's actually kind of funny that you compare them to Silverstein, too, because, like, they are different in their own senses, but, like, Silver... I remember when Silverstein was hot, like, on the scene when they signed to Victory, and, like, obviously Story of the Year was more on a mainstream front than sure. Silverstein was, but both artists, essentially, were, like, you do the screaming and the clean singing? At the, like, you do both? Like, yeah, that it's was weird that thing. in that era that that was weird. Yeah, that was the new thing. And you know, now you hear it all over the place. Yeah, it's just like in it, 2003, you know, in like the early, early, mid-2000s, yeah. that wasn't a thing. Bands weren't doing that. At yeah, least like not you, had, you had somebody who, hardcore scene. you could have somebody doing the clean vocals, you could have doing screaming, or they just weren't even coherent in the same song. Right. Like, if you did clean singing, you were not screaming. Or vice versa. You know what I mean? Right, yeah. It was either one or the other. It wasn't a, like a combination yeah. like these. And now that they're actually doing them together, you'd think it's like, oh, the guitarist is doing the cleans while the front man's doing all the screaming. But like, you got bands like Silverstein and uh, Story of the Year where the front man is doing majority of all the vocals. It, it's a, uh, kind of a, it was a nice, it was a breath of fresh air. It was like a nice juxtaposition. I don't know mm -hmm. if I'm using that word correctly there. <laughs> You're asking right. as weird as as much of a lyricist as I am. I don't know if you used it correctly either. So. Um, but yeah, I, I think it was a nice contrast uh, comparatively to a lot of like the the punk and the early emo bands like that. Yeah, or I guess not really emo, like screamo. Um, yeah, stop fucking saying that they're whining emo, bro. Like you keep going back to that. You keep trying to bring my boys down. 
<laughs> they're not that sad. Do you listen to their later records? They definitely ain't sad. They're not sad. They just made it sound sad. <laughs> okay. All right. But there okay. are, I there are a lot of like great riff moments on this record. Yeah. Uh, there's a lot of like really awesome heavy parts, and they don't they don't overdo it, which I like. Uh, it's just like a, like I said, a little breath of fresh air, so to speak, in the middle of the song. It's it, it comes down to the production, um, and as well as their songwriting ability they wrote excellent songs and they were recorded very well um but the production also really really helped this record out quite a bit for me personally um as you may come to find as we continue doing this show i have a soft spot for acoustic guitar in the middle of not acoustic songs or like layering acoustic guitar and over top of something. There's definitely a good amount of that in this record. I there's think. definitely a good amount of it, and they even add some strings, which I think is a nice dynamic touch. Mm -hmm. It really it aids in it, it kind of solidifies like how good their songs are. Yeah, that they are able to translate them over into you know non traditional rock instruments mm -hmm. and and still make it fit and still make it work and kind of it adds a dynamic that really drives home like making you feel something like oh i feel that a lot i definitely do i agree with that like the when you listen to strings on a record or you listen to acoustic on a record that isn't like it's all electric it's all heavy and whatever if you listen to that it's going to invoke a different emotion than just listening to a straight rock album yeah yeah that was like the that was really the big thing for me um the, like the acoustic breaks and the layering um, <clears throat> and like it, like I said before, the, like there's just so many good riffs. Yeah, like they're not overly technical, but I mean, you can tell that these guys got chops. Did you? I mean, I don't know if you dove into their discography after this record, like to listen to them more. There's one record that I've listened to a little bit, but I honestly couldn't tell you the name like, of it. I feel like some of their later records, they almost did like a Sum Forty One thing. Like Sum Forty One mm -hmm. was very like punkish mm -hmm. and then they started getting like weirdly heavy like chuck is almost chuck almost sounds like a metallica record you know what kind i mean of, yeah like, like it almost has like some of these like metal vibes like diet metallica <laughs> yeah um and story of the year kind of i don't want to call it just straight up they almost sound like arena metal like um i think they're they, i think the record after page avenue was self-titled if i'm cr remembering correctly and that record, like, I, it, some of the tracks, like, they, they sound like arena metal. And, like, mm -hmm. I remember, like, watching one of their music videos, and, like, they're like, on, like, a... It's all, like, green-screened around them, but, like, they look like they're on this platform, <laughs> and, like, fists in the air, and it's just, like... It, it literally... And, like, he's wearing, like, a ripped tank top, you know? Like... Oh, hell yeah. Yeah, dude, it just... It has a very metalish vibe. Yeah. And, um... And, I mean, then... The records, there's certain tracks that have like that same kind of vibe. Sure. But then they also still kind of bring back the same emotional pull like they do have in this record. Right, so right. I do suggest maybe listening to a couple more of their records. I don't, I don't love them as much as I love Page Avenue, mm -hmm. but I don't hate them. So, honestly, I think the riffs are enough. Like, all the riff moments on here are good enough to where I probably will check out more than just the two records that I've now listened to. Yeah, you being more of. I don't want to say you're more of a musician than I am, but I feel like you appreciate more of the musical aspect than I do. Like, I really love music, and I do, if I hear a fucking song that grabs me emotionally outside of the lyrics, like, just like you said, if, you, if I hear sing, strings in a song, like, like mixed with... It's a vibe switch. It, it, yeah, I could almost cry. You know, like I mentioned the Billie Eilish song, like, when the symphony comes in, like... It's no longer like a normal Billie Eilish pop song. Right. There's a straight up fucking symphony. Yeah. And I'm just like... <sighs> and just to reiterate that they did all of this on their debut record. Like that bands were not doing that. Yeah. At least not bands for their debut record or bands of this level when this came out. I'm sure Maverick was like, let's throw some money your way and make this fucking record sound. Well, well yeah. I'm we're sure. going to sell you. You never heard of this girl, Michelle Blanche? <laughs> your, Apparently not. Your record's gonna battle hers. Right. Um, all that being said, uh, I would definitely... Uh, I'll come back to this record every now and again, 
it, I mean, I'm 27 now, so early 2000s emo isn't something that I'd necessarily go out of my way to because you didn't fucking grow up on it. You didn't because I didn't grow up on it. Yeah, yeah. I'm telling. I go back and I listen. I, I listen to these records religiously, and like I said, it's because I. This is something I lived with, and I grew up on. So it's like, it doesn't hurt me to go back and like rip through fucking the taste of ink, like by the used. Like I want to fucking rip that record because. I used to love that record, you know what I mean? So yeah, and it, to kind of go back to what you were saying before about like how, like you're not as much of a, to to put it bluntly, you said basically you're not as much of a musician. Yeah. Um, I think because I am an instrumentalist, that's more so what I look for when I listen to a record. Like, are the riffs good? Are the chord progressions cool? Like, is this a memorable part of the song? Like, I'll I'll listen to lyrics. Like, I'll listen to certain things for the lyrics. Mm -hmm. Like, City and Color, for example. I love yeah. his lyricism. Um, but stuff like this, I'll probably go back to because, like, there's some cool chugs in here. There's some cool breakdowns. I get it. I um, get it. <coughs> and, you know, it's not like you were... Like, I didn't really dive too much into the lyrics, like I said. But from what you told me and from the little bit that I did read, it, it's just kind of them... You know, like missing their family and that sort of stuff. And, you know, I, I get that to a certain degree. Like, I, I've been in those shoes, so I, I, I get it. I've talked the production of this record to death, I feel like. But I I gave it four stars. And I think it was honestly... For production? For production, yes. Honestly, it was the acoustics and the strings that really just that hit a home run for me. I think that really tied the record together. I think it showcased their songwriting ability incredibly well, especially for a debut record. Um, and I'm actually seeing here that the record was recorded in John Feldman, the producer's home, not the singer. Hmm. So now that I've said that 12 times earlier in the show, <laughs> I'm going to retcon and go ahead and say that it was in it's John It's less Feldman's impressive home. now. Yeah. And now the snare's starting to sound like shit to me. <laughs> <laughs> But yeah, like I said, all things considered, like considering it was 2003, it was recorded in the man's home, I don't think they could have come out with a better put together product. Yeah. The record, like overall, it didn't really feel like it dragged at any point. I think I, it clocks in at 41 minutes and 47 seconds. And I think that's probably the perfect length for a record. Because like I don't average know, record, yeah. Yeah, like I don't know about you personally, but I've actually had this exact conversation numerous times with various people i can't i don't want to listen to anything more than 45 minutes even of my favorite band's record really yeah i just think like i, I just think it's too long like it's it, depending on the band that's cool because the record you suggested for me next week is like an hour and three minutes long <laughs> There's exceptions to everything. That's a sneak peek, though. If you can guess what record is like an hour long, you might know what's our ne what next episode is. Yeah, because you know there's only like six records ever that are an hour long. <laughs> I mean, I feel like I've had this conversation with people, too. And like, yeah. I feel like as time has gone by over the years, records have gotten shorter. And like, Absolutely, yeah. And like, what you're saying is the opposite of the conversations I've had with people. Really? Yeah, because I feel like, once again... We're not that much far that we're not that far apart in age, to be honest. Mm -hmm. However, like as far as what we've listened to and when we started listening to them, like when I was listening to records when I was younger, like an average record could base between like forty minutes to an hour. You know what I mean? Like yeah. almost fifty five minutes. Now, like you find a record that's like, oh, we're releasing a full length. It's got 10 tracks on it and it's like 28 minutes long mm -hmm. and it's like if you're lucky you know what i mean yeah and i'm thinking to myself like that's that's fine and all depending on like what you're looking for if i'm looking if you want to listen to like a, a hardcore record that's 12 track 12 tracks long and it's 24 minutes part of me gets that because i mean i've written hardcore songs that are like a minute and 18 seconds long i have a whole full I'm, length full of those <laughs> you know what i mean so it's like <laughs> I get that, you know what I mean? But like, when you're listening to a band like this, mm -hmm. I feel like 42, 42 minutes is like on par to where you should be. Yeah, I think anything more than that, like if you, when you start creeping up on like 50 minutes, then it's kind of like, mm, maybe we should wrap this up. Mm -hmm. But that being said, I think the songs are 
different and like different enough from each other and interesting enough to where 42 minutes doesn't feel like anything. It, it feels like 25 minutes to a half hour. Cool. I mean, you've pretty much broken down like your replayability record of this record, the quality and production, obviously, because you've talked about it endlessly. <laughs> um, your feelings of lyrical and, and playtime, but what do you? What would you give this record overall? Overall, out of five stars, I gave this a three point five. I think this is a fantastic debut record from a uh, from you know a fairly unknown band at that time. I think it also helps that I'm listening to it for the first time as an adult mm. because I feel like if I had listened to it intently, like the same way I listen to it now. If I had listened to it like that as a kid, mm -hmm. I probably wouldn't have the same sort of appreciation for it as I do now. I feel that. And at the age that I'm at currently, I've listened to a lot more music. I've, you know, played, I've written music of my own, so I kind of understand what it takes to write a record. A, to write a record, exactly. Yeah. So there's a level of appreciation that goes into the, the rating here. I do kind of feel like I missed out, that being said. Um, even if I may not have been as into it as someone like in your, a little closer to your age, um, I, I do feel like I still would have enjoyed it, the very least the heavy parts on the record. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I, I, you did miss out. You missed out. No, there's no fucking ifs, ands, or buts about it. Like I said, this was a record that ex-girlfriends in high school had. Like the, the AP pictures out of the magazine on their walls you know what i mean right. like it was just it was it was the record that everyone was singing at the time right anthem of our dying day comes out like you're in the car with your friends and your mom's driving and like the f part where he just screams everyone else is like screaming in the back yeah. you know what i mean and when like at the very end of until the day i die and he belts out like until the day i die <laughs> And like everyone's fucking, dude, you don't was I, I I literally white knuckle my steering wheel screaming that song, like do you, you just white don't. knuckle your keyboard at work also doing that? <laughs> I do not. I, I didn't. I get dude. I actually talking about the snare drum. My Olivia who sits on the other side of the wall asked if I was okay because I was clip like knocking my thumb on my keyboard to the snare drum because I love the fucking snare drum. I was just like. Pop, <laughs> She's just like, are you okay? And I'm like, yeah, yeah I'm just listening to music. It's all right. <laughs> like, it's, it's all good. It's story of the year. You wouldn't get it. <laughs> you wouldn't get it. Yeah. <laughs> cool. Um, that's really all I have to say about this record. Now, let's get to the one that I recommended to you, sir. What what record did I give you? Well, you gave me Led Zeppelin. <laughs> um, <laughs> like I said, for episode one. I was like, let's keep it mainstream-ish. I, uh, I, I didn't want to... I know we're going to get to a point in these episodes where I'm going to mention a band that probably half the people listening are like, who the fuck is that? You know oh, I'm I mean? sure. I'm sure. And vice versa for you. Yeah. So I wanted episode one to be bands that we're going to name it and everyone's going to be like, oh, why why haven't they listened to that record? You know what I mean? So Well this is that. <laughs> so it, you def you definitely took me by a curveball because you originally were like, Oh, this is tough. This is tough. And I was like There were a few good options. I was, I was here, like, why I... is it that tough? Like I, I had listened to a lot, but like it's not that tough. And then you were like, Have you ever listened to Led Zeppelin's four? And I was like <laughs> It's actually self titled. It's actually untitled. Oh, excuse the fuck out of me. <laughs> fuck off, bud. Fucking biggest fan over here. Who the fuck looked this one up, bud? Not me. <laughs> so, I I was just like, yeah, no. <laughs> I have, like, listened to the band at some point in my life. I, you can't not, like... And anybody who's listening to this, unless you're, like, under the age of, like, 15, if you want to try and tell me you've never once heard Led Zeppelin... You're, You're probably lying, lying to yourself. Because it's been in movies. It's, it's been commercials. Dude, it, like, it, they've been a band for like 50 Like, if you've watched years. the Super Bowl, you've listened... If you've ever watched the Super Bowl, you've listened to fucking Led Zeppelin. Oh, absolutely. Like, fucking... What is it? Fucking uh, rock and roll. Like, that was in like a... It's in so many commercials. It was in like a Dodge Charger commercial, like, in like five Super Bowls ago. Like, yeah. 
I'll never fucking forget it. So, if you're gonna tell me you've never listened to Led Zeppelin, you're a liar. Like bottom line, like you may have, the only way you're not a liar is if you just didn't know you weren't listening. You were listening to them, which I'm guilty of because there was a, um, a track on this record where I was like, oh. I didn't know this was Zeppelin. You know what I mean? Like just rock and roll. Yeah, just it, that's what it is. They're just a fucking rock and roll band. Um, straight up, background, whatever else. Like this band, wonderful rock band from London. Um, they formed back in 1968. So, yeah, if you're under the age of 15, I get why you might not fucking know what band this is. What 52 years ago now? <laughs> nah, I'm not doing that. <laughs> um. But yeah, like I said, I'm guilty to say that I really didn't know shit about this band, really. Um, and uh, and like I said, it was an odd choice for me to like be the first episode. But like, it honestly worked out for me because I do love music. So it was very educational in a sense. Like, mm-hmm. I learned a lot about a band that is very iconic. Like, yeah. when me and Michelle went to the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame last year, like, I mean, there's a whole area for them. And it's like... Oh, cool. It's Led Zeppelin. They're fucking rock legends. Yeah. And it's like, cool. Good for them. Like, I know that they're fucking, like, they're memorable. Like, I can talk to anybody a generation before me, and they're going to say a lot of great things about Led Zeppelin. Absolutely. You know? They were very important to music as we know it now. 100. Like, that was something that I, like, I learned about this band. Um... And when I was looking up, that, I mean, I've always heard the name Jimmy Page. Oh, yeah. So, like, obviously, like, as soon as I read that, I was like, oh, I fuck, I know where I'm at right now. Mm-hmm. Like, he was a guitarist my dad was obsessed with. Like, he always talked about Jimmy Page. Like, if it wasn't, like, Jimmy Page, he was always, he, he loved him and Leonard Skinner. Like, those are, like, mm-hmm. two, like, artists that my dad always fucking talked about. Yeah. So, right then, then, like, I was like, I'm in familiar territory. Like, I feel a little bit better, and, like, now I know, knowing where I'm at. Even Robert Plant, like... Maybe, yeah, maybe yeah. not for you personally, but that's well, another... The, the like, name house, itself. It's a household name. That's like a fucking VH1 behind the music. I was like, oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah, here we go. Now, now I'm hearing something. It's got a pretty distinct last name. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. And I mean, and you've obviously, people have seen the name. They're on fucking t-shirts. Like, even if, like, kids wear these t-shirts because they just don't know what it is. There's it's just like a shirt they buy in H&E or some shit, or H&M. Uh, H&M. Walmart. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, fucking at you Walmart. get a yeah. Led Zeppelin shirt at fucking Walmart. <laughs> Yeah, these guys, uh, they actually were signed to Atlantic Records. Um, and they were, when they got signed to Atlantic Records, they were part of what like was called the British Invasion in the mid-1960s of music. And um, honestly, speaking of like how they were a huge part of like musical history mm-hmm. and like music now, um, a thing that really like shocked me that was really interesting that I read about them was because of like the heavy guitar driven sound that they had they were actually cited as like one of the creators of heavy metal yes sir and that to me was like i've listened to this band and i'm like and like when you listen to heavy metal now and then you go back you're like this isn't heavy metal but then you got to think like this shit wasn't around yeah nobody was doing this that's what you got to think about when you listen to this is like you listen to these bands that come out now and everyone's like oh my god this band is so like creative I've never heard this before. Like, this is a cool sound. Like, that was happening all the time back then. Yeah. Like, and that's the only... That's, like, one thing I'm really jealous of. Like, I love the music I listen to now. And, like, I know if, like, my mom hears it, she's like, well, this isn't great. Like, I don't get it. Like, yeah. why is Story of the Year such a good record to you? This sounds, like, garble to me. You know what I mean? Garble. <laughs> <laughs> but, like, the coolest thing I would say growing up back then is, like, when bands like this came out, like, it was new. Like... It, you yeah, know how a, fucking cool that had to have been? Like, I'm ju- that's one thing I'm so jealous of people that are going to die well before me is, like, they list, they got to hear shit when it was, like, never done before. They got to hear genres before they were genres. genres yeah. And that's absolutely wild. Like, people are creating genres now, but, like, these genres suck. They're just sub-genres of shit. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, like, big, like, bass genres. Like, they made metal. Yeah, basically. Like, and, and it, it might sound like a stretch to some, but if you go back and listen to pretty much anything leading up to physical graffiti from from Led Zeppelin, you'll you'll you, it'll make sense. See, I'm in your fucking wheelhouse right now because you love this shit. I grew up. This on, is what you were raised on. Like, Led I Zeppelin listened to this? was my dad's favorite band, and in the little bit of research that I did, because I love Led Zeppelin, 
this is their most accessible record. Like you, like that's what I said. Like you're fucking, you like you're sweating right now because like oh, you're yeah. so excited because, and I could tell like as soon as you mentioned this record, I was like, he's gonna be excited. Like oh, I'm and I, off right now. I know that you like this shit, and I don't. I, I listen to it too. My mom always listened to this kind of stuff growing up, but like, and my dad did, but like. It's not something. Once I got to a point where I could listen to music on my own, I didn't go out of my way to listen to bands like this. Yeah, and you know I what think I mean? part of that for me came from being a guitar player. That's so Jimmy Page was point. a huge influence mm-hmm. for me. I get it, I get it. Um, but honestly, like listening to this record, you can kind of totally see like why this band was cited as somebody that like created heavy metal. Absolutely. Like there's some cool shit going on in this record. Yeah, it's it's a trip, man. <laughs> a trip is for sure. <laughs> um so pretty much explaining this record itself, uh Led Zeppelin's record was actually an untitled record, like I said. It wasn't self titled, fucker. If it was self titled it would have been called Led Zeppelin. Um but it was commonly known as four because it was the fourth record. Right. Um, the record was actually produced by Jimmy Page, um, and they recorded it between the months of December and February 1970 to 71. Um, they recorded this album in a country house called the Heedley Grange, where bands such as Fleetwood Mac, Peter Frampton, and Bad Company recorded. Um, they had originally considered recording at Mick Jagger's home, and realized that that shit was going to be way too expensive. There's actually some really cool videos uh, where they go back to Heat the Grange. Really? And they talk about the recording of this record and like some specific songs on this record. Which oh, like a more like re- a more recent video, not like a video like. Yeah, it's like a, it's on YouTube. Like it's, oh, it's not like an old video. Um, so it's like Jimmy Page in his like 60s or 70s oh, just going cool. back and being like, "Oh yeah, I remember setting up the drums here and like wiring up this reverb box or whatever." See, I'm an idiot. I should have looked that stuff up. That would have been kind of cool. But I did not look that up. <laughs> I'm going to have to look that up, though. That's kind of cool. I am, I'm really interested to see that because I'd like to see what this place looked like because, I mean... It's it, pretty massive. It's pretty big. It's a cool idea to, like, think, like, recording the way that some musicians did back then. Yeah. Like, now, like, I wrote, I've written records, and, like, for me, it was, like, you start slowly building song after song after song, show up to practice, write the song... Cool, we got the songs, let's do pre pros. Cool, we got the pre pros. Cool, let's go to the studio. Cool, record's done. Yeah. You know what I mean? But like some of these bands, like they would go to places like this Grange and just like, hey, we're here, let's write a record. You know what I mean? Yeah. And that's cool to me. Like to be able to like lock yourself, like I've, I've heard of artists like locking themselves away, like going on trips. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Like I wish I could have fucking do that someday. Like, to me, that would be a wickedly cool way to write a record. Just to, like, experiment with, like... Yourself. Your the, brain. With, like, with, with what isolation does to your... Yeah. Your mental capabilities. Like, let me go to a fucking cabin up in, like, Placid. Leave my phone behind for, like, a week. And just go off the grid. And just let me fucking write the next fucking record, dude. That's what I'm gonna do. That's what I'm gonna do for the next Tired Eyes record. See you guys. <laughs> Taking a month <laughs> off. Fuck off, boys. <laughs> Fuck off, boys. <laughs> um, but basically, once the basic tracks were done for the album, um, the album was completely recorded. They took the tapes to Sunset Sound in L.A. for mixing and with a plan to release in the April of 1971. Uh, however, though, the band was not digging their final product. Uh so Paige, who pretty much is in charge of this band. Yeah, he just kind of took the reins of yeah. this one. <laughs> he was just like, nope. And then he remixed the entire record. Like, the entire fucking record. Yes, sir. All on his own. Um, and this was all going on while, like, they're touring and shit. Yeah. Like, I was like, that's why. Like, you're taking on too much, dude. Like, how are you not having, like, panic attacks? Like, I was anxious reading about it. I was like, you're just fucking. And I'm sure there were so many drugs involved. That probably made it a lot easier. <laughs> yeah, but guess. like, and that's what kills me is like, if you don't it's, know it's, where you are, it doesn't really matter. <laughs> Coming from a straight edge mindset, it it it's it's different, I guess, for me because like it's like going to a like a house party and people are like, do you want to play beer pong? I'm like, yeah, I'm straight edge. Like, I just won't drink. I won't drink anything. And they're just like, oh, you're probably gonna suck. I'm like, what? Like, I can't throw I'm, a ping pong. Like, ball. I'm like, probably gonna be yeah. fine. They're like, oh, well, you get better when you get drunk. And I'm like. Okay. That's fucking bullshit. But, like, 
From look, someone who drinks, that's bullshit. <laughs> well, look at this fucking record. Like, <laughs> this guy, was, God knows what Jimmy Page was on when he was, like, I don't remixing even think it. Jimmy Page knows what Jimmy Page was on. Exactly, but that's what I'm saying. Like, maybe he was just like, fuck it, I'm going to take some drugs and I'm going to fucking record. <laughs> I'm going to remix this record. <laughs> and he just fucking does it. Dude. I, it. To me, that's that was in itself was wild that he just remixed the entire thing on his own while he was touring. Um, now, at this point, the record's done. Like, they're ready to fucking go. But the only thing holding them back from release was the, cho- the choice of what they were going to put on the cover and how they were going to title it. Um, so for the original cover idea, Paige was like, he wanted to have the members of the band pick symbols to reflect like them to be on the cover of the record. Um, but as far as the, t- the title goes... Um, Led Zeppelin, pretty much to this point, was not faring well with critics. Like, their first three records, like, as well as they may have been seemingly doing, they were not, like, accepted by critics at all. Like, they were just, like, the feedback was not good on them at all. They had, like, a cult following, is how I've heard it referred to as. That's literally what I read, like, three different places. Yeah. Like, just saying that, like, it was one of those things, like, it's like the bands that we like now. Like, they're big to us in certain areas. But like you look at them on a, on a bigger level, they're not big. They're not. They're not a good band. You know what I mean? Right. So, and that's pretty much where they were at this point. Um, so, and then especially after Led Zeppelin three, Page decided he was just like, "Fuck it, dude. This record is not gonna have a title. Instead, it's just gonna have the four symbols on it, um, chosen by the members, and that's that. Like that's how the record's gonna be. We're not putting a fucking title. Like they weren't even gonna put like their name like on it. You know what yeah. I mean? It was just gonna be there. It is. Right. Um, and if any sort of shocker to anybody out there, the record label was bad about it. <laughs> like, oh, go the, figure. The record label was like, this is a fucking awful idea. Yeah. Um, but Paige and everybody else in the band was like, nope, this is what we're doing. Like, we're not doing, we're not doing anything else. That's how it's going to be. And clearly, as we see years fucking later, that's what they got. Um, yeah. And to me, I respected that fucking move. Um, it power it, move for sure, dude. It was it was cool because. You don't do that. Like, <laughs> if your record label who's funding everything you are going to be doing tells you you're not going to do this, like, you don't do it. You, like, okay, well, what, what should we title it? You know what I mean? Right. And instead, they were like, no. Like, this is our art. This is what we have done. We're going to represent it how we want to represent it. Dude, and that, it, that just, it blew my mind. And it honestly, it truly blew my mind. When I was reading about it, and I saw that like some seasoned press agent told Jimmy Page, he was like, "Don't do this. Don't release an untitled album. You're literally committing professional suicide." Like that's what he told him. Quote, Jokes on yeah. quote for quote, you're committing professional suicide. Well, yeah, the, f- the album finally dropped on November eighth, nineteen seventy one. And ended up being reissued several times throughout the 70s, including a lilac pressing in 1978. The record was remastered and released again in October of 2014. And now the big thing for me while reading about the band and everything leading up to this point was, how was it received? Because like I said, everything going up there was just like, this is an awful idea. You know what I mean? Like, you're releasing a record that has no title. It's just fucking hand-drawn symbols on it that mean nothing to no one. (laughs) Like, if I looked, if, if you looked at this record and you weren't a Zeppelin fan, like, what are you going to think of this record? Like, right. would you pick it up or would you? Like, and that kind of made me start thinking, like, what if you go into a record store back in fucking 1971 and you see this brand new record that comes out and it says Zeppelin above it, above it, you would probably reconsider. But like, if you didn't see Zeppelin above it, you just saw this record and you were like, oh, I don't know what this is. And then you were like, this looks interesting. I have no idea what I'm going to have to put myself into. Right. And you were just ballsy and you just fucking bought it. You know what I mean? Like, what if you were like a music connoisseur? Like, and it was in the, it was placed in the genres of rock. So you were like, you're like looking at all these other artists. You're like, oh, I love this band. I love this band. Like, I'm going to grab this fucking record because I have no idea what it is. And then you got home and you're like, this is the new Zeppelin record. And then you were like, this fucking record rips. <laughs> right. Like rock and roll comes in and the drums are. <laughs> and you're just like, oh it's yeah, a, dude. It's such fucking... an iconic riff. Oh, dude. It, 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 it pulls. So basically, despite all the haze that they got, the shit they got prior to the release, Led Zeppelin's 4 was met with, met with overwhelming praise from critics. 
Um, it received compliments such as the band's um, most consistently good album. It landed five stars, nine out of tens, and A pluses from like any major magazine that was around then back then. Um, and then, needless to say, at this point, the album made an impact on music and the world. Um, it was the most impactful record by this band at that point. Um, and to this day, it is one of the best-selling albums of all time, with more than 37 million copies sold as of 2014. That's absolutely wild, and that brings me to something that I mentioned to you earlier that <laughs> I thought would be kind of, uh, kind of fun to mention here. I went to Led Zeppelin's Spotify um, earlier just because I knew we were going to be doing this. And not only do they have over 13 million monthly listeners, Stairway to Heaven, which is on this record, has over 400 million plays. And that's just on Spotify. <laughs> this record's been out since 1971. Can you imagine how many plays it's had not on Spotify? That's like, that's a staggering number. Dude, that's absolutely insane. Like, <laughs> I can't even, like, imagine what 400 million people, like, would look like. <laughs> like, in a crowd. That's like, more than the world. That's literally more than, no, it's not. No, it's not. That's the world's, like, 7 that's, billion that's people. More than the, it's more than America. It's more than America. That's what I meant to say. <laughs> that's what I meant to say. Like, because I, I just literally listened to this on, on Dax's show today, like, America is like 3.5 million or some shit like that, or 3.7 million. Yeah. So yeah, that's more than America. That's, that's more people than in America. That's probably like all of North America, like listening to this record that's at one time. Absolutely, like I said, staggering. Dude, and then I, I wanted to just compare. I was like, okay, that's the number one song by Led Zeppelin. Cool. Let me look up the most number one listened to song by Story of the Year, and it was Until the Day I Die. Obviously. Obviously. <laughs> it, with a whopping 55 million views. Hey, that's not. It's bad. still a lot. That's it's still, still a lot. lot. But you can't the, compare that to fucking like what? What you just said? Four hundred million. <laughs> yeah, dude. That's there will never be another band that will have the kind of success that bands from Led Zeppelin's era were able to achieve. Yeah, it's it's absolutely insane. You know, like Metallica's like the cutoff for <laughs> bands getting that popular. I think. See, that's the thing though. Is that's how we think now. Well, yeah. You know what I mean? People back then did not think this about Led Zeppelin. No. Or Metallica. You know what I mean? Like, look at bands now that, like, are coming, doing their comebacks. Like, My Chemical Romance. You know what I mean? Like, <laughs> like their comeback was extravagant. You know yeah. what I mean? Like, people dropped ass loads of money to go to California for one show. Mm -hmm. And then they announce a tour, and that sells in, like, six hours. Like, and now people are reselling their tickets for, like, almost two grand a pop. Like, that's just their comeback, and, like, that's generational now. Mm -hmm. Like, what do you think My Chemical Romance is going to look like when we're about to meet our grave? You know what I mean? When we're 70, we're fucking, we're itching to fucking dive into the ground and die. <laughs> like, and our grandkids... Delicately put. <laughs> <laughs> our grandkids are going to the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame... And they're looking and being like, wow, my chem had the fucking highest records rates of all time. Like, it's just, it's weird. It's it's shit like that. The, like, the bands now that are big, we can't see them ever reaching the level of these bands. And technically, they never will because, like you just said, the listens on Stairway to Heaven is huge. And that's just going to continue to climb. Exactly. You know what I mean? Well, that will always continue to climb. So I can't see how a band like, Thrice would ever, ever catch up to that. That and people but like, don't buy records like they used to buy records. They just stream oh yeah. records and there's no money in streaming. Mm, arguable. There's not as much money. Arguable. That's changing now. That, that's changing. A $25 vinyl versus a couple cents from... It's like still, a that's changing. Per play. The, is it really? Yeah. It, that is, it's definitely a changing mechanic, especially for record labels, because people aren't buying records. You right. know what I mean? So how are these labels in the artists are going to make money and streaming is obviously the new thing so mm -hmm. there that is something that is happening i'm not going to indulge into that because i don't have enough knowledge so i'm not going to have no, me neither <laughs> exactly but i from somebody who was a part of the slow transition of noticing that when my records were dropping it was starting the transition into um streams are more worth than selling a record Gotcha. You know what I mean? And it's starting to get to that point, and you can start seeing now 
in the way you can see the monetary value of that is people five even five years ago when a record came out they would launch first week record sales right. where did you land how did you do like the billboard chart exactly like now those charts and everything else are going to cons- if you start looking at a band after their first week sales you no longer see oh they sold 2,000 copies in their first week you're going to see oh they sold x amount of copies in their first week and also had 7,000 streams right you're going to see both stats listed and then eventually sadly in fucking x amount of years you're going to see this band in their first week had 9,000 streams cool they're fucking on fire you know what I mean? Yeah, you don't like even no see album sales. Yeah, that's you know fair. What I mean? That's fair. And that's why I think vinyls are making their comeback because, like, that's the cool like thing to buy. Like that, that like because it's like a every, tangible collectible. Every new car you buy now doesn't have a CD player. So True. why would you buy a record? Why would you buy a CD? Why would you go out and buy a CD? Because you don't. They're not gonna come home and put it in your boombox because you don't have a boombox anymore. True. You know what I mean? You can download Spotify right on your Xbox and stream it. I mean, yeah. speak for yourself. I definitely still have a boombox. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, I'm gone way left field on this one. Right. <laughs> um, let me wrap up this fucking Talking about the music business as a whole separate conversation. <laughs> <laughs> um, I mean, dude, honestly, I, to loop it all back, this record is fucking wild. Uh, <laughs> I won't lie, when you, you, you told me to check out the record the first time, I really wasn't excited. I was almost like... I wouldn't even say annoyed. I was like, I can't even tell Michelle. I was like, I gave him story of the year and he gave me Led Zeppelin. <laughs> like, how the fuck am I supposed to enjoy this for a first episode? And fucking, honestly, dude, <laughs> literally like over an hour in, this has been wonderful to even talk about. And uh, the first listen I went through was probably a snooze fest for me. And to be fair, I was driving home after work and I was already tired and I'm sitting in five o'clock traffic and I'm fucking listening to fucking uh uh fucking ba- no <laughs> battle of evermore and oh, like I'm yeah, just yeah. like okay the same riff for fucking six minutes like I, yeah I just <laughs> that that one does drag a little bit and I'm just like I'm ready to like die like I just like I <laughs> fast forward to 70 with my fingernails in the ground you know yeah yeah um but like I said, that was my that was my issue, and like I said, the biggest exhaustion I had was repetitive riffs throughout the whole record. Like, there's yeah. just the riffs are cool the first time you hear them, but then when you just hear the repetitive, yeah. just like for five minutes straight, you're just like, dude, what the fuck? Like, obviously, like I said, they were tripped, like in. I th- <laughs> and I think listening to this record on a whole other level probably would be a way more enjoyable record for somebody who is fucking took ten shrooms and then they try to listen to this record front to back. And like the I haven't done shrooms, but I feel like that's a lot. <laughs> <laughs> it might be. But you can't OD on shrooms from what I've been told, you know. I'm a straight edge talking about drugs that I don't know about, so um but obviously I had to listen to the record more than once to ch- like really grab the full effect. Mm-hmm. It wasn't just gonna listen to it once. Be like, oh, I'm ready to write a review, and like, <laughs> right. I, I gotta listen to it a handful of times. I mean, I just listened to it today again. So, but I mean, the more I've listened to it, the more I fucking fall in love with it. Right. Um, Good. Yeah. Yeah. You should. <laughs> exactly, dude. Like right from the beginning when Black Dog kicks in. Oh, I love that riff. Like so you much. know, like like I said, if you say you don't know Led Zeppelin, listen to the first two songs of this record. You're gonna be like. Oh, I know that stuff. Like, that riff specifically is such a smart riff because the guitar and the drums are playing in two different time signatures at the same time, like weaving in and out of each other, which is why it sounds so cool. Yeah, dude, I I caught myself, and the reason I knew I knew this record is because the first time I listened to the record, and he comes in with the vocals to start the song, and I was just like, oh, I know this song. Yeah, exactly. It just, yeah, it's just it was it was great. I caught myself singing along with it. Um, uh, and honestly, the first four tracks of the records, which back in 1971, would, you would call side one of the record. Right. Um, I can actually have a physical copy really? of vinyl of this. Like, oh, an sorry. original pressing. Oh, you right. would. You would. You would. <laughs> so for my dad. Thanks, Dad. Love you. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Dad, don't listen to this. Um, th- oh, this, he's going to. He told me he would. <laughs> side one is, is probably my favorite. The Battle of Evermore was eh, was probably the weakest part of side one. Mm-hmm. Each side had a weak rap track for me. Yep. Um, but overall, I think the whole record was great. 
Um, it's it's an experience. It's it's you can't really sit down. I mean, you can like sit down and listen to individual songs, but it's better if you listen to it as like a full exactly Led Zeppelin four experience. Exactly, and um and honestly, to be fair, like even though it drags, songs like um, Battle of Evermore and Stairway to Heaven, like the, you could feel the emotion in the story of those songs mm-hmm. and the depth of them, which is something I really like. Um, I think that comes partially due to the experimentation of like the instruments on there. Mm-hmm. There's a lot of like folk instrumentation, and yeah, just like some real weird stuff that you wouldn't hear from a rock band in that era. Stairway to Heaven is like obviously it's the most iconic song, but like 400 million players, <laughs> it's it's got everything in that song. Yeah, it literally has everything. Like, is a song that starts off the way it does. To see where it goes is it's a ride in itself mm-hmm. like you, you listen to this 43 minute record and you're just like wow that was that was a wall that was a long like, i'm f- exhausted that was a long 43 minutes but if you listen to stairway to heaven you're like did i just listen to the whole record like yeah. it's a whole like it musical like, journey in its own it has like movements to it yeah it's like i would never degrade this record to compare it to an also great record but, like, it reminds me of, like, certain tracks off of um, Green Day's American Idiot. You know what I mean? Like, They're not silly. musically completely, but, like, how, uh, like, songs like St. Jimmy and, uh, um, I, I'm going to look like an idiot now. <laughs> Are you talking more, like, the progression of the Yeah, record? just, like, how it's, like, it almost sounds like the fluidity three of songs into one song. Yeah. Okay. You know what I mean? This song starts off so, like has a cool slow story mm-hmm. and then just like that fucking guitar the, like that solo, solo at the end oh <laughs> just like it's and so then like it, it, it gets so heavy yeah like his vocals are just ear piercing and it's just like the music is just breaking up and they're just like the <laughs> oh man dude that song is i wish i i wish i could play it but i did follow your notes notations and i did some digging and unfortunately i'm not <laughs> risking shit because There's I did not find, for copyright. I did not. It's not even just them. I did not find one positive blog, vlog, report, article about copyright infringement in general. Yeah. So like it's like I got permission from Ethan to play gag in the beginning, but like I won't even risk putting story of the year because I don't want the podcast to be taken down. Right. Because even if I say disclaimer, none of these songs belong to me. Blah blah blah. If there is ever an issue, they can be removed, and I'm not not trying to fuck with that. We don't want to risk it. If you haven't listened to Led Zeppelin before, get on Spotify, get on YouTube, fucking just listen to it. Same with Page Avenue. It's easily, it's readily available. Just do it. Yeah. Um, Please. I don't want to. I don't want to drag too much about this record. Um, I really did like the song "Going to California" a lot. Mm-hmm. Um, if I'm being honest, the one song I hated the most was "Misty Mountain Hop." Like, yeah. I really hated it. It was, like, had this weird pop in the beginning, mm-hmm. and it was definitely the worst track for repetitive riffs. Like, yes. oh my fuck, I wanted that song to end so <laughs> bad. Um, and I think, honestly, you and I have a shared feeling that When the Levy, break, Levy Breaks is the coolest, heaviest, best track on the record. Yeah, when that... <laughs> so when that drum beat comes in... I'm shaking my head. People can't see me. I'm, <laughs> I'm shaking my head because it's the, that it sounds big and roomy and punchy, and then the harmonica comes in, and in the history of rock and roll up to this point, a harmonica has never dropped so hard. Oh, so did that, that whole, and it's and I I even blew you away when you got here, and I told you like that song's a long song too. Like it's, that is like a seven minute song. Yeah, but it's and, good. It doesn't feel like seven minutes. Yeah. Like the drum beat is really consistent through the whole thing, but like the storytelling is really good. And, and that's the thing that kills me about this record is like Stairway to Heaven and this song are so long. Seven minutes, eight minutes. But like I don't give a fuck. I could listen to those songs five times before you have me listen to a three and a half minute Misty Mountain fucking hop. Yeah. Like, <laughs> it's just, it's crazy, the difference, to be honest. And I think it's a great way to wrap up an overall great record. Oh, yeah. And I'm totally biased here, 100%. <laughs> uh, I love this record. I listened to this record so much growing up. All right, well, while you're fucking 
sweating over this record. And let me rate it. Let I'm me rate this record. Um, as far as replayability, for me, I would have to give give this record three stars. Um, as, as much as I think the record is good, I really can't see myself listening to it daily. Um, and even though it is iconic and what it for what it is and what it's done, it's just not captivating enough for me to want to listen to it over and over again. Now that I our whole listener base. Now that I've listened to it and enjoyed it, I would definitely find myself I literally found myself without even focusing for the podcast, just playing the record in general. Yeah. But I can't like I said, I'm not gonna wake up tomorrow and wanna listen to this record like I wanna listen to Billy Eilish's new song right now. Right. You know what I mean? Um quality and production. Personally I, I think I'm gonna give it a three okay. as well. Um, it's hard for me to judge with this one because it was remastered, um, which is the only copy that I can find right now on Spotify. Um, and honestly, with all the cool creative shit they did, it really gives the record some life. Um, but you know, honestly, fuck it. With 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 all that, like I'm giving it a four. Fuck it. It's, it's gonna get a four. <laughs> like that, you can't you can't deny that. Like with all the cool shit that's on it, like and like you said, like the harmonica, the just shit that, they, that has not been done in that era. It, it was cool. It there's was like, really... There's mandolins. There's like, harmonica. There's, there's just shit that you wouldn't think that would make a quote-unquote heavy record and make it with what they used and still be sounding as good as it did. Yeah. So, yeah, I'm definitely giving that a four. Um, as far as lyrical content, I'm easily giving it a four. Um, <laughs> I truly liked a lot of the creativeness and depth to some of the lyrics in the tracks. Uh, like the story following Stairway is in so intricate and meaningful and the subtle messages pretty much throughout the whole record are, are super, super cool. Um, and for the final category, Playtime, I, uh, I would I would say it was about a three for me. Um, I felt like some of the songs like Misty Mountain just felt like they dragged even if they weren't that long. Mm-hmm. Um, and even though the record is 43 minutes long, some of the lengths of the tracks made it feel like they dragged longer um, because of the repetitive riffs, like I've mentioned throughout the whole fucking thing. Yeah, and you know, that's not necessarily exclusive. That if any band does that, it can. Exactly. And then because of all that, I mean, that's why the replayability for me is a three. You know what I mean? So, like, it makes it tough. Like, I don't want to listen to Misty. <sighs> <laughs> if you're I really, say the name, I'm you're just really gonna... mad about Misty Mountain. Dude, Mountain. it's so bad. Like I fucking hate that song. Can you imagine listening to that on a vinyl record where you just gotta let it play? No, I'm picking up the fucking needle and moving <laughs> it like two riffs so I can fucking avoid it. Maybe someday I'll have to bring over the vinyl copy I do have to get you the, the real experience and not the remastered <laughs> Spotify experience. Yeah, br- have me break edge and bring over some fucking drugs too so I can like really dive in. Not about that. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so overall. All, I think this landed. This record landed a three star. You should check it out rating. Um, but man, this record was a fucking trip. Um, honestly, thank you, thank you for having me check out this record. Um, from the beginning of this review, like I said, I was annoyed and confused on why you would have me listen to this record. <laughs> to now, I'm just like, damn. I feel like I generally missed out on like legendary rock, like. I mean, when I was growing up, I, I had, like, my mom's Ario Speedwagon. I had dad's Fleetwood Mac and ACDC. But, like, I never experienced this. You know what I mean? I didn't experience this side of rock and roll. And, like, now, even though I'm 31, I'm happy that I did. And I'm happy I took the time to read about the band and learn. And, like, fuck, this is making me so excited for this podcast. Yeah, man. Like, the fact that of what this episode did alone. Like the idea of this podcast I had was just to explore records that we've never done. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Like as far as the shock value of Chuck, some 41, it just, I was like, damn, Nick's never listened to this record. Why? You know what I mean? And there's been bands where you show me and I'm like, I'm so happy Nick told me to check out this band. And all I wanted this podcast to be was like, oh, we're gonna check out new music. But, like, I did not realize the depth this podcast was going to have for me mm-hmm. after I read as much as I read about this man. You know what I mean? In the, the reading I've already done for episode two and, like, knowing about that band and things I didn't know about that band, mm-hmm. it's, dude, I'm so fucking excited for this podcast. Like, it's, 
it's so fucking cool. Yeah, I'm, I'm excited to, to dive in. I haven't done nearly as much research for the next episode as you have at this point. But um, I'm a fan of the band already. Mm -hmm. And I like most of the other stuff they've done. So I'm looking forward to diving into and getting a little bit more familiar with this record. And, and uh, Dude, and to see where <laughs> what else we have. Like, we're not doing two episodes. We're doing fucking... Oh yeah, episode on episode, you know what I mean? We got a nice good list. We, we got, got a good list going. We got lists. <laughs> we got lists on lists. So I mean, fuck dude, I'm I'm excited. And then obviously anybody listening, it's not limited to just our suggestions either. I think eventually like if you think there's a cool record out there, send it to us. Tweet it, tweet Instagram it, to us, it whatever. It, yeah. Like maybe it's a record I listen to and Nick has them or vice versa. Um and we would love to check them out. You know what I mean? Like, we want to do what we can to make the, the podcast interesting. But this, these two records were cool. And this record was fucking... I'm glad you showed me this record. I really yeah, am. Man. This, is a, this is a great little project. And I'm, I'm excited to be able to share these kinds of records with you. Yeah. Because they obviously mean something to each of us. Mm -hmm. and I think being able to... To share that and, and kind of dive in and learn a little bit more about like what makes this record great or like what makes you personally latch on to this record. I think that's something that a lot of people don't necessarily think about a whole lot. So hopefully the show will kind of open them up to the idea like maybe the, there's a reason that I like this record or like it's not just the lyrics. Like there's there's memories like attached to these sort of things. And, yeah. Yeah. Dude, yeah, exactly. Like, the whole, it was the whole time you turn my story of the year, I was just, like, flashing back to high school. Like, the whole time. So, yeah, I, I definitely, definitely agree with that point. Definitely do. But, shit, dude. We fucking did it. We did episode one. We we made it all the way through the first episode. Um, like I said, I'm really excited to see what's next. Uh, if you've made it this far, if you really like what you hear, please subscribe Follow us. Give us a five-star rating. Um, I know it's from people that I have known that have podcasts, from podcasts I've listened to. The only way that these podcasts grow is by people sharing them, listening to them, rating them. So please, if you really do like it, give it a rating. Um, we'd really appreciate it. Uh, we're also brand new hot on the Instagram and Twitter game. So please give us a follow at Ever Heard of Pod. E V E R H E A R D of Pod. Um, each week, I'm slowly going to spell the entire thing out. <laughs> um, um, but that would be the best place to really follow up, get sneak peeks at coming episodes, see what we're listening to. I'd love to find ways to communicate with people and like get their feedback on the episodes, plus um, get ideas for future episodes. So please follow us on the Instagram and Twitter game. If you want to follow us on our personal Instagrams, um, you can follow me, Rob, at Rob underscore UWAG. Still haven't changed it, even though I haven't been in the band really for the two years. <laughs> um, and you can follow Nick. Uh, you can follow me at Natty Daddy XL. Yes, like the beer, but a little bit taller. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, seriously, uh, again, I'm, I've said it multiple times. If you've made it this far into episode one, Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you so much. Um, it really means the world to world to us. Um, please give us a follow, download whatever you got, you, whatever you do, wherever you listen. Um, tell your friends about it. Yeah. Uh, tell your parents about it. Tell your grandparents about it. Definitely tell your parents about it, especially about episode one, Led Zeppelin. They love to hear Rob's shitty fucking review on this goddamn <laughs> record, so they can sit there and argue with me through their their car speakers. This kid doesn't know what he's talking about. This was rock and fucking roll. That's probably going to be my dad, if I'm being honest with you. <laughs> it's all right. It's one of his favorite records. I was, I was talking to him about it the other day, because I told him we were recording this. And, uh, so I know we're going to at least have one listener here. <laughs> yeah, Daddy Becker, if, uh, I hope you liked it. We still call him that. <laughs> <laughs> can't call him Daddy Becker? Okay. <laughs> Mr. Becker. <laughs> Um, I I really like the record. I really did. So please don't don't think I didn't. Um, but until our next episode, uh, please go check out Story of the Years Page Avenue in Led Zeppelin's Four. Um, if you want quick access to these records, um, what I'm trying to do is I'm making a 
a public Spotify playlist. Um, so any records we ever review on the podcast or talk about will be on this playlist. So this this playlist will consist of, as of right now, um, Gag's record. Um, sorry, I say Gag because it's easier. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Great American Ghosts record is also going to be on there. Um, Story of the Year's record is going to be on there. And Led Zeppelin's record is going to be on there. So as, as of right now, there's three full lengths on that playlist. Every episode, when we release an episode, we'll also add those bands to the playlist. So that playlist will continue to grow. So the bands you're interested in checking out, you can literally go right to that playlist, give it a follow, listen to it. You can go ahead and do that. If you just search Yeeho, um, you can find it. Um, that's what we're shooting for, the Yeeho, you know what I mean? That's Y-E-H-O. Exactly. It's super easy. Um, <laughs> throw it around, hashtag Yeeho, you know what I mean? Like, before we started recording, we were just Yeeho and my cat the whole time. Just, Yeeho! <laughs> <laughs> but... <laughs> That's uh, the cat's gone now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I haven't, I haven't seen her since we started recording. So, um, but yeah, that's how you can listen to every record we have. Uh, before we end this up, Nick, you got anything you want to add in? Oh man, I'm really looking forward to this project and sharing records with one another. Yeah, this is this is cool. This episode was really cool. I'm um, I'm really uh, eh, enlightened. No flabbergasted no <laughs> i'm fucking excited dude that's that's the words i have excited flabbergasted enlightened elated that's what i was aiming for there we go <laughs> i'm fucking elated right now yeah man. yo babe i'm elated i'm so fucking stoked she's so mad at me she's probably trying to sleep <laughs> yeah we got some cool stuff planned so if you like what you heard or you know even if you just skipped right through it you might you're probably going to find something that you have that you're interested in um, so, like we said, give us give us a follow. Check us out on the gram, on the Twitter. Oh, um, for certain people out there that might be interested, I don't know exactly what the future of it's going to be or how I'm going to run it, but you can find me on TikTok at Kingsley Chronicles. Um, it's Kingsley underscore Chronicles. Um, somebody demanded we make a TikTok because I mentioned it in the pilot episode. So, TikTok has been made. Don't know when the first post will go up, but like I said, Kingsley underscore Chronicles. I, I guess I have to make a TikTok now too, huh? Maybe. Depending if the followers demand it. <laughs> but that's it. Thank you guys again, seriously, so much. Um, stay well, and uh, see you all next time. Yeah, good job, babe.